Welcome to lecture number 8 for ECE 463 Modern Control Ball and Beam System. In this lecture, we want to come up with the dynamics for a ball and beam system. And probably to illustrate what this looks like, let's look at the resulting MATLAB simulation. So what the ball and beam system consists of is I've got this beam with the motor attached to the hub. I apply a torque that can make the beam go up and down. As the beam tilts to the right, I've got a ball on it. Gravity pulls the ball to the right when it points down. When it points up, gravity pulls the ball left. I've got a set point where I want to send the ball. So what I want to do is to get the ball to go right, I first dip the beam down to get it to go roll, go roll right. Tip the beam up to stop the ball. And then when it gets to the desired spot, hold the beam level. And when I say hold the beam, I'm applying a torque to the beam. Find out what the torque should be to do that. At this point, I also need a constant offset. I've got gravity pulling down. This is a one kilogram mass. So I've got torque is force times distance. Mass times gravity times one meter is pulling the beam down. I've got a counter torque offsetting gravity. To get the ball to roll back left, I tilt the beam up. Gravity starts accelerating at left. To get the ball to stop, I tilt the beam the other way. Trying to get the ball to stop moving. And if I do it right, I'll get it to stop at the origin. Now to do this, I need two things. I need to know the beam's dynamics and the control law that does, that controls it, stabilizes it. The control law is going to come later. Right now we just want to look at what are the dynamics of the beam. If I apply a torque to the beam, how does the beam rotate? How does the ball move? So that's the objective of this lecture. Find a beam origin. The beam has rotational inertia of 0.8 meters. I've got a ball of mass 1 kilogram on the beam. When I plug, spins the beam counterclockwise. And the displacement of the ball is R. The angle of the beam is called theta. And the x, y are shown in blue. To get the dynamics, I need to write the Lagrangian. To do that, I need the kinetic energy and potential energy. For the ball, its position is r cosine theta and r sine theta. The derivative is x dot is using chain rule, r dot cosine theta minus r cosine minus r sine theta theta dot. Uh, y dot is chain rule. Derivative of the first term is r dot sine theta. Derivative of the second term is r cosine theta theta dot. Now the potential energy is just mgy mgr sine theta. The kinetic energy is 1 half j theta dot squared, that's rotational inertia of the beam, plus the translational velocity, 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared, plus the rotation. Assuming a solid sphere, the rotational inertia is just 1 fifth mr squared. And before we had the 0.7 mv squared, I or I've separated it because if the ball isn't moving and the ball's further out and the beam's spinning, I have that rotational inertia. Plus I have the ball spinning. So I have these three terms. So the kinetic energy then is 1 half j theta dot squared plus 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared plus 1 fifth m r dot squared substituting for x dot and y dot. Um, x dot is r dot cosine theta minus r sine theta theta dot. y dot is r sine theta plus r cosine theta theta dot. Squaring these terms, I'll get cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And that gives me the r squared theta dot squared, this term. 1 fifth m r dot squared is here. And the cross terms cancel out conveniently. So this winds up being the kinetic energy. Uh, plugging in point 0.2 for j, 1 for m, here's the kinetic energy. So the Lagrangian then is kinetic energy minus potential energy. Here's the Lagrangian. The force on the ball then, which is going to be zero, but if I put a little motor on the ball, try to make it spin, the force will be the full derivative with respect to t times the partial uh, with respect to r dot minus the partial with respect to r.
So taking the first term, find that there's an r dot. This gives you 1.4 r dot. Nothing, nothing. So there's the partial respect to r dot. Partial respect to r is nothing, nothing. Here's an r. Gives you r theta dot squared minus g sine theta. Now take the full derivative. They get 1.4 r double prime minus r theta dot squared plus g sine theta. There's the first term in the dynamics. Next, take the partial respect to theta. That gives you the torque on the beam. That's actually my control input. The partial respect to theta dot is 0.2 theta dot. Nothing. Here's the theta dot. Plus r squared theta dot. And nothing. So here's the partial respect to theta dot. Partial respect to theta is nothing, nothing, nothing. There's the theta. Gives you minus and minus g r cosine theta. Now take the full derivative. Full derivative of 0.2 theta dot is 0.2 theta double prime. Chain rule. Derivative of the second term is r squared theta dot double prime. Derivative of the first term is 2r r dot theta dot plus g r cosine theta. So here's the torque. Put them all together. Uh, take the accelerations, pull them left. Well, take everybody, pull them right. I get r double prime theta double prime is the mass matrix times the mass matrix is, I'm looking at the torque, here's the 2r r dot theta dot with a minus sign, because I pulled it left, minus gr cosine theta, pulled left, plus torque. That's the nonlinear dynamics that I will simulate. So here's the nonlinear model. That's what goes into MATLAB. Uh, so again, if I go into my simulations, I'll have one called beam dynamics. That's what this is. Here's the mass matrix. Uh, B1 is this guy. B2 is the second row. And the acceleration is the inverse of the mass matrix times the first row, second row. That's the nonlinear model. To come up with the linear model, I'll need the linear model to do eigenvalues, eigenvectors. What I'll do is linearize about some operating point. The dynamics change depending upon r. So let's assume my set point is going to be at 1. Angle 0, force 0, mass is 1 kilogram, j is 0.2 kilograms. If I do that, here's my dynamics. And solving, um, that's my linear model. So the first two rows, the derivative of r is the third state. Derivative of theta is the fourth state. Derivative of r is r double prime. Dividing through by 1.4 gives me minus 7 times theta. That's it. Uh, dividing through by 1.2, theta double prime is minus 8.167 times r plus 0.8333 times t. For this system, I have four poles, I have four eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are at minus 2.7 plus j 2.7 minus 2.74 plus j 2.74, something like that. Uh, so again, it's unstable, oscillatory, but uh, one of the three poles or four poles is actually decent. This is actually a very, very difficult system to control by hand. It's open loop unstable. Plus, I've got two poles on the JMEG axis. In terms of animation, I've got a couple different programs. There is beam display. What that does is I pass it a 4 by 1 vector and the set point. If I say, let's draw the beam at 0.5 meters, 0.3 radians, 0, 0 for velocities. And my set point's at 1. Here's my set point. I want it to go 1 meter out. The ball is currently at 0.5 meters. And the angle is at 0.3 radians. That's what the beam display does. And again, does some of the same tricks we did last time. I'm going to figure out how far along I've gone along the beam, divide by the radius. That tells the angle of the ball. Draw a line through it because it's kind of pretty to watch the ball roll. Really just cosmetics. Uh, the more important part, the beam dynamics. 
I'm going to pass to it vector x. And this is a matrix language in MATLAB. I'm going to interpolate x to be position, angle, velocity, angular velocity, and gravity. From that, I can calculate the mass matrix. Uh, let's see, the first row, second row, inverse of mass matrix is the acceleration, and here's the derivative of x. Derivative of r is dr, derivative of q is dq, and the derivative of dr dq is the acceleration. And you can try that to say, what are the beam dynamics? My torque is 2 newton meters, the position is 0.5, 0 0.300, zero. and it says here's the acceleration on x dot, theta dot, the question, r double prime, theta double prime. Uh, if I want to control this system, I need to come up with a different uh, feedback control law. PD control doesn't work. For example, if I try PD control, here's what happens. I want the ball to roll right, so I tip the beam down, and it just falls. It's unstable. You can try various PD controllers, but with an unstable pole, two poles on the JMEG axis, it ain't going to work. It is possible to stabilize the system. I'm doing some tricks from coming up later. Get the gains just right. I've got four feedback gains. Stop. If I wanted to come over to one meter. I can do it, but coming up with the gains is kind of a challenge. That's one of the future topics we'll be looking at. How do you come up with stabilizing feedback gains? But again, that's a future topic. For now, I've got the dynamics of a ball and beam system. A little complicated, but given the right feedback control law, I can stabilize it. Uh, there are a couple of variations on this. Now what I'm doing is I'm applying a torque at the hub. The torque produces acceleration on the beam. Uh, integrate once, I get velocity. Integrate twice, I get position. Another way to do that is gear down the motor. We have a motor with a bunch of gear reductions. So the beam is slowly turning. The motor is spinning very, very fast. What happens when you go through gears? Gears act as transformers. The impedance seen by the motor drops as the turn ratio squared. If this is like a 3 to 1 turn ratio, then the motor doesn't care about anything else. Basically, the motor is going to define the velocity that the beam turns. If my input is velocity, then the dynamics become as follows. So here's my input, velocity of the beam, basically how fast the motor is spinning. I now get poles at 0, 0, 0, a triple integrator. This is still really, really hard to control. If I were to add friction, say instead of the ball rolling on a metal plate, make it you know, kind of spongy rubber. So the force is proportional to the minus velocity. Add feedback to the motor so that instead of controlling the velocity, I'm controlling position. Very quickly, we'll snap to a position. I now have the following dynamics. Now the poles are at 0, minus 0.7, minus 10. And with that system, I can actually control it. If I now simulate it, I've got a large gear. So the motor is specifying the velocity of the beam. That gives me a third order system, a triple integrator. If I make the velocity, the PD gain, uh, proportional to the Air in position and velocity gains a 1. I get this, this type of response. I first get the ball to start, start moving right. I then tip up the beam to catch it. And then as the beam comes, the ball gets closer to the target, I'll level out the beam.
that's one of the reasons they use gears. If I have gears, then basically the motor doesn't see the outside world. I can specify the velocity. I'll basically just specify the velocity. Uh, but the system we're going to be looking at is actually where the input is torque. So in summary, if I have a 0.2 kilogram meter squared inertia for the beam, a ball with a mass of one kilogram, these are the nonlinear dynamics. And if I linearize about one meter, here's the linearized dynamics. Later on, we'll be designing feedback controllers for the system. And to see if they work or not, we'll apply them to the ball and beam system and see can I get the ball to roll to the right and stabilize at a given point? So that's lecture number eight, ball and beam system for ECE 463 modern control.